and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. In the last two episodes we've done effects. First a really lo-fi spring reverb and the second one a pretty hi-fi uh, DSP effect. Um, in both those instances the effect is either all or nothing. We plug something in and a sound in and we get the effect of all that sound or none of or we don't plug it in and we don't get any of the sound. Um, and in this episode I want to make a mixing feedback circuit kind of thing. Um, one of those in all effect units that you buy commercially you usually have a input output mix uh, feedback thing um, which I want to make a circuit for these and coming uh, effects units as well. Uh, probably those should be built into all of these maybe uh, but in this episode today I'm going to make a standalone version um, and I found the perfect perfect circuit for that uh, I hope I haven't built it yet but it looks promising it is the Echomatic from an old guitar stomp box uh, book so before we go and look at the circuit I'd like to say thank you to my patrons who keep supporting me and this work and everything in here uh, over on Patreon and I just want to say thank you guys you are amazing uh, it's nice to have someone to push me ahead to make all this um, and with that said let's look at the, the schematics in the computer uh, where I found it and what we're gonna do so the reason I want to make this one is quite a long time ago uh, I talked to a guy on uh, the Magpie Pirates Discord server uh, and he linked to this, he wanted to make this but he couldn't make sense of the schematics which we'll get to in a bit uh, so I helped him with that and then I figured that I wanted to uh, make one of these as well because in, s in reality what this is it's it's an effect strip of a mixer so in this case you have the output level, you have the mix of how much of the effect you want and you have the repeat that is how much feedback you want back into the effect which is mostly used with echoes but you can use it with other uh, effects as well. And so he so, so he, he linked to this site. I don't think this was his site. This was just another site which is where someone made a tape delay with the Echomatic and an old tape recorder. Uh, and I'm, it's on my to-do list and I hope we get to do a tape delay of some kind as well. If I get the mechanics to work, uh, I'll get back to that in that case. Um, so that was the reason I wanted to do this and as we've seen these couple of two episodes it is it would be nice to have a bit more control over how much uh, input we want into the the effect and how much output and maybe also if we want to mix the two and stuff like that um, so this when I saw this I thought this looks very much like an old uh, ETI uh, article or something from an old magazine of, from the 70s and here is the uh, schematics. But I soon uh, just recently realized that this is actually uh, from a book called The Stompbox Cookbook by Nicholas Boscarelli and this is actually not that old. Let's see. 1998-1999 so just 20 years old and this is a really interesting book it's not in print anymore and it's really difficult to get a hold of it uh, but there is a PDF online uh, for anyone who would like to uh, read the book so here you have 
they're all called omatic, sustain omatic, distort omatic, parametromatic, uh, and then also the uh, echomatic someplace down here. It's a really interesting read, but many projects is quite uh, advanced, and he he says in the foreword that you sh really shouldn't. You you need to know what you're doing before you get into these projects. And with that said, I got into this project without not knowing that much. But the most difficult thing with this, I think, is the way the schematics was made. It's it's made. It's not that different, but it's it was really compact and, and difficult to follow along, especially with this bypass here. Um, I figured it out and I actually just I redrew it myself uh, in ECEDA. Um, I later figured that I actually did a mistake in that, so... But uh, it is possible to follow, it's just make sure that you cross out every uh, line that you uh, add or, and every component that you add so you don't get uh, thrown off or, or forget anything. Um, there, he has A and B's connected here. Basically what this is, A is just plus voltage. Uh, so you have V plus here and then just a diode in my the one I did today I actually skipped the diode because I think I have a good enough uh, voltage coming in already and then just a capacitor to ground from voltage and then here's a voltage divider that divides to 10k resistors so you get a reference voltage in the middle this is just like we did in the uh, AAC VCO many many days ago and uh, so we get out a reference voltage on B here that is around 6 volts from the 12 volts and that is what you connect to all these pins where it says B and this A here and A there is just plus 12 volts. So I had this simple design for this module uh, with the output level, mix, feedback, and then this little input to FX from FX and output. But I'm going to add this same, just another potentiometer to the input because I want to have control over how much input because the signal from the from the modular is really hot and most effects probably would distort if we don't get the volume down. So I'm adding another pot for that and then this design, it, it's not enough room here so I need to add, make it wider. So this is the design I'm going to go with. Input level, mix, feedback and output level are all the pots. And then we have the input jack, to FX jack, from FX jack and output jack. And this uh, will be a much better layout uh, and also to have the input level, I think. And here is the final result. Uh, I haven't gotten the panel as usual yet, so this is what we have. Uh, the four pots and the four jacks. And not that many components as I spread them out a bit here along just to not cram everything up around the op amp which I did place a bit bad up here I should have placed that more in the middle oh well um, I did since I redrew the schematics in ECDA I took this and made a PCB uh, which I also tried to build today uh, but that didn't work I built this one first so then when I sat down to build this I built that from the correct schematics and I followed them both at the same time and that is one way a very good way of of error checking while you build is to you you place one component and then you scratch that out and then you place the next one and you scratch that out and I did that 
and doing that I found a few places where I had made a mistake in my uh, schematics which of course is transferred to the PCB um, and I know some of you who have ordered stuff from me sometimes I send things along uh, that you didn't order and if you got one of these I'm sorry they don't work because of these things um, so that is unfortunately just to throw away uh, I'm gonna make a new one uh, and I'll see if I can share the uh, final schematics and the Gerber file for this one when I'm done here also I decided to remove the 1N41401 as it's not needed if you have a really good power supply. Also I removed the... this is meant to be a stump box or it's, it's supposed to have a bypass switch. I removed that one as well in this one. That might be that you want to have a bypass switch um, but in my case here I chose not to have it. So let's go to the modular and see what we can do with this. Alright, I have it here hanging in the rack as usual when I don't have a panel and want to try it out. Um, I have the XOR bell just sending a ping. The XOR bell is controlled directly from the oscillator bank in there. Then this one goes in here to the input. The output to FX goes into the DSP FX input and the output of DSP FX output goes into the return on the uh, echomatic. And then we have the output going into uh, channel 1 in the mixer. So, if we go through the row here, we have input, we can remove or control the input. This was not in the schematics, I added this. Uh, so this will be in my um, in my pick schematics once I know my pick schematics works. It does not work at the moment. Uh, we'll talk about that later or we did before or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so then we have repeat, we wait with that and we go directly to mix. So mix is all in the, so it's all dry signal right now. We have it on uh, program 59 which is echo. So we slowly turn it up here. And now we have it uh, full mix. Now we still have the original signal, uh, I believe, uh, because this is not how it sounded uh, in the last episode when we did only this. Then the uh, so there's still some of the original signal in here. The first. I don't know, I, I think so. I have to check that. Now, we go back to repeat. So in the repeat, this is the feedback. So now we can add feedback here, slowly. And now the feedback is full as well. And now you hear it's almost resonating because it just adds on top of each other. And then we have the output. And the same if we have uh, some other sound. Alright, so if we take something else like just a sound and some great reverberation.
repeat the feedback going into re resonance so we tune that down again if we go up again And so we conclude this episode. Uh, doesn't make much sound or do anything on its own. Uh, you need it with an effect. But I think it complements the effects uh, really good. Gives us more control over our effects that I feel we didn't have in the uh, before this one. So I'm gonna make a few more effects. As I said, hopefully I'll be able to make a a tape delay effect uh, and a few other ones um, and in those I think this one is going to be a good complement to have. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.